Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Vlogmas Day number five. While I sit my hot cocoa down there, uh, today's video hopefully will be really short and simple. Uh, I simply need to get up into the house attic and I wanna go ahead and finish off the six inch ductwork uh, for the oven range top fan that will suck everything out. Uh, should be real simple and easy. We're uh, simple and easy. We're just going straight up, and then we're going to punch out that gable end wall. And uh, to the today, when the sun comes up, because it's three in the morning right now, we'll go ahead and go outside. We'll cut the hole, and we'll actually put the exhaust fan with you know like a bird block uh, flapper valve on it, and we'll do that. And then the other thing I want to knock out is we've got some Fox blocks sitting out back uh, that I want to go ahead and cut up. And on the inside of the garage, on our hatch access point, I want to make like a little like shelf or a, a thick little like extra door that sits on top of the ladder because that ladder up there only has a half of an inch of foam. And that's obviously not that great for uh, keeping that access hole like really thermally protected. The Fox box isn't much, that's only about an R12. But while the stair is closed, that little uh, piece of foam will sit over top of it and just give that much more insulation so the garage, you know, isn't turning on and off as much. It doesn't seem to be because it's so well insulated, but that is a pretty good like four foot by like two foot hole. And I just want to give it a little bit more insulation. So we need to cut up a block. We'll extend the ductwork. And then the only other thing that I can think of that uh, we won't do in this video that I want to talk about though is somebody just mentioned uh, that uh, on the last video or two videos ago that, you know, heat rises. So of course, all the way up at that peak, it's 65, 66 degrees that you saw in your thermal. And I was like, yeah, but the basement heat is 27 feet down from the peak up there. So you'd think that as that heat rises and it's a cooler temperature up in here, like they would mix together and then it would be cooler up there. But even though the thermostat over there is about four degrees different from the basement, like something's going on. How is it 65 up there, 65 in the basement, it's only 61 up here, and it does feel cool right now at this 61 because it's about 20 degrees outside right now, but it's almost like the cool air is passing too fast and the hot air is uh, rising too fast and they're not actually mixing. So that got me thinking of, if it's warmer up there than it is right here, then we need to get that heat back down here which is why I put that hole right there in the ceiling. That is a fully wired up and ready to go three-way switch that is this switch right here and the switch over there on that sidewall uh, before you go into the office. So from either one of those switches, we can activate a fan and a light combo up there, or maybe just a fan combo. And if you put the fan obviously in reverse, it can blow the heat back down, which that's another thing that I think will keep our mini splits from having to work too hard in the winter time. Not to mention, mini splits really don't work when you get below like four degrees Fahrenheit. And come in the next couple months here at nighttime, we will see negative temperatures. So that means those mini splits are not going to work at nighttime for us. So we're once again relying 100% on the basement heat to bring up heat, our fireplace once we get that installed, or we need to rely on the fans that are clearly keeping it 66 degrees up there, but we need to bring that back down. So we need to talk to Aaron because I literally just had that thought of how can it be only 61 right here, but 65 and 65, it just didn't make any sense. So I think that hot air is just rising too fast. It's just crazy that it's 27 feet up from the basement floor and it's that warm up there, but it's cool right here. So we need to talk to Aaron and we need to figure out getting a uh, fan purchased and installed because it's already wired up and ready to go. All we gotta do is get it up in there and then start blowing that 65 degree heat down here. And then it actually might get warmer than the 61 that we're feeling right now. Oh, and then the only other thing that I wanna do in this video is once we finish out that ductwork, we no longer have to get up into the house attic space. It can be completely finished off that there's nothing else that we have to do. So the little doorway that I cut in this gable end wall that allows me to go from the garage attic space into the house attic space, 
we have to basically seal up that hole. Uh, I'm not gonna seal it up 100%. I wanna put like a doorway in. So again, it's only three in the morning. We gotta get over to Home Depot and purchase some like uh, a latch and maybe some hinges and then some like weather stripping tape or something or some seal and we'll make something out of lumber to create like a doorway that goes around there. But per code, the garage uh, air is not allowed to enter the house attic space. So those two attic spaces cannot co-mingle. So I've got to seal that door off or make a door and seal it off so that we can abide by code. Now you and I damn well know that anything that leaks from the garage like exhaust fumes that get up into the garage attic and if they get up into the house attic it's not like those exhaust fumes are going to come down here into this living space because every single light fixture and hole and every transition point and all the drywall etc all of those are spray foamed and sealed soon we'll have tape and mud over everything so and then again you've got freaking 18 19 inches of blown in cellulose those fumes aren't going to go back down through all of that and get into the house attic space or into the house space, but again, it is code. So in about three hours, we'll go to the store and do that. So we've got those three things to do tonight, and uh, I think that will be it. The only other thing that I wanna mention real quick, speaking of drinking my hot cocoa out of my Diamond Pier cup, Diamond Pier, once again, saw, I think, a video I made a few months ago when we installed the final piers for the back porch that we still have to do. And they hit me up and they said, would you like a free tool? They gave me a whole list of tools to pick from. They were all about $300. I'm not being sponsored in any way, but they were like, we will send you a tool for free. Which one would you like? And I ended up picking a uh, DeWalt, uh, like mini little five or six gallon air compressor. So that way when we're doing our trim work and stuff down in the basement or anything, I don't have to lug that big heavy guy around because all I'm gonna be using is like brad nails. So I would like to shout out to Diamond Pier when it shows up. Thank you very much for the free tool. I will definitely be using that air compressor a lot because it will definitely be moving in and out of this house and out in the garage way easier than that big chunky thing over there. All right, so first two things here, we actually have to build our pipe. These things don't come assembled, so that way they can store them in here. It's a little bit of a pain, but you gotta like push these guys together, and then they kind of like clip into each other, and then they lock in, and actually make like a solid tube. And the second one thing, I had to cut the two by fours because up on the trusses where I used to stand on is now completely filled up with insulation. So we gotta like attach a couple more boards so I can make like a ladder so I can actually move up in there. So I think the game plan is we're gonna go up, we're gonna go over, and then we're gonna turn out that gable end wall. So I do have to find some string because we're probably gonna have to tie this stuff up to the upper rafters. So that way that pipe's not all sagging or pushing down on the drywall and it gives it some support. But let's go up there and attach these guys and figure out a game plan of how we're gonna route it. Holy crap, it's cold up here. I don't expect the GoPro batteries to last too long. It's snowing in here. Obviously that's just the insulation. All right, that'll work. All right, we gotta get this pipe cleaned off first and then attach it. And there is insulation down in that pipe, by the way. So that way before we get all this done and get the uh, attic ceiling or the uh, fan installed, we won't be bringing freezing cold air down into the kitchen. All right, that height actually looks perfect. And for right now, we're just gonna seal it up with this tape. Hopefully it sticks, cause it's freaking freezing.
All right, so that's good there. We're up pretty high. We're pretty much up to the gable end here. I think the game plan is though, uh, because we've got the exhaust fumes over there for both of the radiant or the boilers, I don't want to put it on this side of the gable wall, uh, like on this side of the peak. I want to put it on this side of the peak going down. So pretty much we have to 90 over right now, which will get us over to this side of the peak and then we can punch out there. So that way, this is at a higher elevation than those gas seams, but as those gas seams are rising, this is actually at a lower elevation on the other side of the roof. So that way we aren't getting fumes in from there down into our kitchen, because that actually would be bad. So 90 over here, I got some rope. We'll support the uh, horizontal leg here from like here and here. So that way this pipe isn't all hanging down. And then I think a punch out point will just have to be like somewhere uh, over in here, however long our pipes are, but we should have enough. All right guys, sorry, not getting a lot of this on camera. There's no place to set up, but just went ahead and put my first 90 on. We got two rope straps up over there, and I think these are five foot pieces. So I need another 36 inch piece to go down further, and then we can 90, and uh, I made sure that we're going out that gable end wall and not obviously hitting the uh, soffits underneath of there. We're obviously gonna about to drill through the uh, garage roof, because that would be bad. These things fit terribly. All right, 36 inches over. We got our turn going out that wall. We will need a little bit more. The only thing that sucks is now we got the exact same size piece here and the exact same size piece that these aren't really gonna wanna go into each other. So we gotta figure something out. But at least all these pieces going into the uh, uh, each other, we've got a male end over here that will make this last piece of install uh, easy to do. All right, last piece here, that 36 incher on a 90. I was able to get that inside of each other, uh, even though one of the sides wasn't like tapered as a male end because uh, this uh, 90 degree was just slightly smaller than the actual pipe size. So it was able to go inside. But we just need to put that male end into that last piece, uh, put it up against the wall, draw it with a Sharpie so we know where this hole needs to go. And then we can drill out. And then this stainless steel guy is the same one that I used for uh, the master bedrooms fan. It's a six inch stainless steel duck with a flapper valve and gasket. Unfortunately, these flapper valves suck. They like basically hang open the whole time. So what I'm gonna have to do, like I did on the bathroom, on this pipe right here, I'm gonna get some like a uh, window screen that I have laying around somewhere and I'll put a piece of window screen around here, tape it on or put it around this and tape it on. And then that way when it slides in, we've got a window screen inside of it. And since that's just an exhaust uh, for the oven, it's okay that there's a screen on it. Obviously, if that was a flapper valve for like your dryer, you're not allowed to have any screen on it at all. You're only allowed to have the flapper on for a dryer because lint can get caught in there. But the, uh, the window screen should be fine on that guy. All right, so this should work. A little bit of screen material right on there. And then, then when that guy goes inside of there, then you look in, we got a perfect bug screen that nothing can get up in there. And that should work 100%. Okay, that should work. Strap over there. We do have a light, uh, slight uphill. So that way, if anything were to get in there like condensation, technically it can drain back. No different than if that pipe was completely vertical going up to the roof. But again, complete horizontal strap there, strap there. And then we got a 90 right over there that will punch out that gable end wall. I did have to adjust it because I think we were gonna hit the outside soffit. So I went down a few inches, but we still have a good taper. 
and we can go ahead and take this pipe off. I'll actually put a pilot hole right dead center in the center of that hole before I cut it out. Go verify it outside on the roof and make sure that we're good before I cut a six inch hole. But that should be absolutely perfect. All right, so before we head to the store, I'm gonna cut this box block up and then I think we'll go this way so that we can like put these uh, blocks together and like go long ways. So however long we need, we'll cut on down here, cut on down here, we'll stick them together and then on one of the fox strips, we'll put a piece of lumber down to hold them together. And then again, these will just lay on top of our ladder and should give some extra insulation. All right, last step, we're, we can set the foam here and it'll clear the ladder, but we've got nothing over here. So I'm just gonna put a two by four over here and screw it to the wall. And then that way, it'll be a nice flat transition all the way over there. And then hopefully the foam will fit as we sit it right on top. All right, there we go. So that just gives a little bit of a extra protection so we're not leaking down in. And every time that we're uh, coming back up in here, the ladder's down there. We just push this guy up and out of the way and we've got a little bit more thermal protection up here in the uh, garage attic space. All right, everybody, a little bit of change of plans here. Uh, it's Sunday, Home Depot doesn't open till eight and I'm tired, so. What I just did real quick, I put the door back in place. I put some zip tape over here so the tape will actually act as a hinge for now. And then we just have a screw on this board and a screw on this board. And we'll figure out how to tape this up later. But all I have to do is remove this one screw right here and this will kind of hinge open. And again, we can put the hinges over here at a later time, but I don't want to go all the way in the town just for some hinges and a latch. But that's really all I have to do, except for the three sides that, again, we'll do at a later time when I figure that out. On a positive note, uh, the stair was closed up while I was eating some dinner there for a minute. And when I dropped the ladder and came all the way up here, it felt the same temperature as it was down in there. As soon as I move that foam out of the way, you just get blasted with, uh, it's 18 degrees right now that it dropped down to. So that is 100% working. That right now is just a kind of like a temporary thing. And we will not be able to install that because I'm an idiot and I forgot on this gable wall here up above the roof, we still don't have siding on. So I can't drill my hole out through there yet because then I can't attach uh, my flapper valve piece because then I'd have to remove it and undo the caulking and spray foam like on the inside here as I like spray foam this to the back of that wall right there. And I can't do that and then like do siding. So. Uh, we'll just leave that off for now, but just pretend that I did go ahead and get that last piece installed, taped up. We drilled the six inch hole out through here, and then I went ahead and installed the uh, flapper valve. But not to mention the roof is completely like ice right now. So I can't go up there anyway and try and get that installed because I'm just gonna slide down and kill myself. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I'm gonna get out of this freaking attic because it is so cold. But uh, everything that we did today is working. We'll go ahead and deal with that later. That is awesome and freaking working. And that guy fit 100%. We just need to uh, go ahead and fix that hole real quick or cut that hole out and get everything installed. So uh, yeah, if you guys got anything to say, if I did this venting wrong, please say something down below in the comments. Uh, again, it's just an oven vent. It's all rigid pipe, so you can't go wrong with rigid. 
but um, if I did the pipe wrong, maybe there is a, a limit on how far it can exhaust out, but that hopefully would just depend on the power of the exhaust because we really only went up about 10, uh, 15, maybe 20 feet out. And then you do have to deduct for the two 90s as that uh, uh, d drops your distance uh, every time you make a turn. But let me know if I did that wrong, but I gotta get out of here. Let me know what you guys think, comment down below. And uh, wrapping it up for Vlogmas day five here, and we'll be back tomorrow with vlog day number six.